Minister, uh, I mean, really, against a background of people facing uh, additional costs to heat their homes uh, and to provide energy for their homes of, I mean, the estimates vary, but 800 euros uh, in the year is a reasonable estimate by bunkers. Uh, .ie. Against that background, 100 euros is pathetic. It's insulting, it's a drop in the ocean, uh, and it's not going to cut it. And uh, it is good that the government uh, seems to be acknowledging uh, that more needs to be done. As others have said, we did make this point to you at the budget. Uh, the five euro increases, failure to expand eligibility to the fuel allowance was uh, just not good enough. Uh, and indeed, when this scheme was first announced uh, towards the end of the year, we were very clear in saying it was pathetic, that it was not enough, and that the government didn't understand that people were literally choosing uh, between food and the energy to heat their homes, or uh, between paying the rent and energy to heat their homes, uh, because people are being hammered in every single direction. Uh, and 100 euro against that background is utterly, utterly pathetic and insulting. Uh, and you're going to have to do a lot more. Now, let me say, the one piece of advice I strongly urge you not to take is the really shocking suggestion that came from Deputy Cowan uh, a few moments ago. Oh my God, how wrong can somebody get it? For Deputy Cowan to suggest the answer to the current uh, spike, spiral, in energy costs and prices is to privatise the ESB, he must be out of his mind. That is the last thing we need to do. And in fact, it, it was the decision to move the ESB away from being a not-for-profit uh, entity towards being essentially a commercial entity, even though it is publicly uh, owned, was the beginning uh, of the onward and relentless uh, drive upwards uh, in the cost uh, of uh, electricity uh, and energy. Privatisation is the problem. The commodification uh, of energy supply uh, and distribution has been a total disaster. Uh, and this is the really key point uh, that we need to make. You see, some people uh, present inflation or rising cost of living as if it's like the weather. It's just the weather has changed. Um, and we've got to take measures, maybe short-term measures, maybe slightly longer-term measures to deal with a change in the weather. Inflation is not a change in the weather. Inflation is one group of people robbing another group of people. And we really need to get that into our head. Because the ESB last year made 363 million in operating profits. And that was low compared to the previous year when it made 616 million euro in operating profits and paid out 81 million euro in dividends. Okay, so when the pockets of working people are looted with shocking increases uh, in the price of electricity or gas or heating oil, oil, somebody else is making money. And that is true on a global scale and it is true uh, domestically in this country. Shell, quarterly profits, they are crowing about them globally, mostly on uh, gas sales just for the quarter. Global sales for Shell uh, are at 6.4 billion euro a dramatic increase. They point out that 2020 was a bit of a tough year for them, uh, but it's all over now and they're enjoying a bonanza. Just in four months, 6.4 billion euro. So if you're somebody who buys shares in Shell, as I'm sure plenty of rich people in this country do, or if you have shares in any of these uh, privatised energy companies, including some of the ones that are going to produce or are producing wind energy, uh, you're doing fine. But if you're somebody who's a tenant 
whether it's private or public tenant, uh, and you have absolutely no control whatsoever over the level of insulation in your home, and as a result of the amount of energy you need to heat your home, uh, and your home, as many are, whether it's social housing or whether it's private tenants, you are screwed, crucified, and you have absolutely no control uh, over the amount of energy you use. But a disproportionate amount of, the, uh, of your income, your meagre income, for hundreds of thousands of low-paid uh, workers or people who are on disability uh, or on social welfare benefits, uh, uh, you are being absolutely crucified just to keep yourself warm. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, to, pay, uh, to pay the rent. And all of that is going into somebody else's pocket. Uh, the decision uh, to cut back supplies globally, why was that done during COVID? Why was it done? To keep up the profits. Simple as that, to keep up the profits. Not based on what people's energy needs are, but in order to keep up the profits. Make sure we can keep paying the dividends to the people who can afford uh, to put their extra wealth uh, into buying shares uh, in big corporations. That's the reality of this situation. So inflation is not the weather, it's not a natural phenomena, it is one group of people using a crisis to loot the pockets of the people who can least uh, afford it. So our starting point has to be that recognition, and that then dictates what sort of measures you take, both short term and long term. Short term, we need to control the price uh, of energy, electricity and heating oil. Introduce price caps just like in order to control the spiralling cost of rent, we need to introduce rent controls. Anything less will not cut it. Uh, if you leave it to the market, these people will continue to ensure that their profits are high. Whether it's from energy and electricity or whether uh, it's from the rents uh, and the wealth they generate from them. We need controls so that these basic things that people need to survive, to live, uh, uh, are affordable for ordinary uh, people. Anything less is not good enough. And as we alone in this house, because nobody else seems to want uh, to talk about this stuff, we have pointed out that in the Consumer Act, the government have the power to do it. They have emergency powers uh, to declare an emergency and the cost of energy and then to impose uh, maximum unit price costs for energy. Why will you not do it? My God, the government was pouring billions into big corporations uh, to keep them propped up during COVID, but it seems we can't introduce the same kind of emergency measures in order to control the price uh, of uh, energy and electricity on companies, I repeat, that are making lots of profit and who could well absorb it. Uh, and that is what should happen, particularly when those companies are publicly owned. But my God, do not make a bad situation worse. Pour fuel on the fire, sorry for the pun, by privatising these entities and driving them further in the direction of profit rather than uh, in actually provi providing for the energy needs of the people in this country. And God almighty, it is absolutely shameful. When you think, uh, you know, I, I've never been much of a fan of Fianna Fáil. Uh, but at least, you know, at one point, they did construct Ardna Crusher uh, and ESB and so on and create an energy company. The, the what? Oh, you're claiming incorrect. the credit for that. Apologies. Incorrect. Apologies. Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil doesn't make much difference in truth. It doesn't, it's the same to us. Uh, it, but uh, the idea was a state company. Okay, the state not leaving it up to the market and producing energy and creating a company, a publicly owned company operating on a not-for-profit uh, not uh, basis. So that's what needs to be done. We also need to extend eligibility to the fuel allowance, to the many pensioners, uh, to the many low-paid workers uh, that uh, uh, are absolutely crucified with these energy costs. We need to dramatically reduce, indeed we would say withdraw, the carbon taxes uh, because as I pointed out, people who are tenants or low paid workers who can't afford uh, through their own resources uh, to retrofit their homes, why are they being punished for what other people are doing? Why are they being punished more than people who have the money to retrofit, retrofit their homes? Because if you have the money, as wealthy people do, you can uh, mitigate against the costs of what are going on now in terms of energy price hikes. 
but it is the working people, it is the poor, and the less well off, the tenants, public and private, who are absolutely crucified by this and do not have the resources to do anything uh, about it. Reduce, as the Spanish have done, reduce the level of VAT. Reduce the PSO levies. There's plenty of uh, measures that could be taken uh, to deal with this. But we also need to address those income uh, inequalities which are being exacerbated by the inflation uh, crisis, uh, which uh, is not just the 5.7 or the 4.4 projected for next year, but is again is disproportionately, because these are averages, uh, disproportionately higher for people who have to spend a bigger proportion of their income uh, on paying their rent uh, or keeping a roof over their uh, head. Uh, we need to, to give wage increases to working people. I mean, I met a group of private security workers. I mean, here's another where we haven't talked much about in the last while. I met a group of private security workers. These are the people, by the way, who provided security in the hospitals, on the public transport, worked all, uh, and also, uh, uh, all sorts of public buildings, private buildings, and so on, earning 11.65 euro an hour. 11.65, I mean, how is somebody supposed to live on this? And they can't get even a miserable pay increase to bring them up to 12.05 because of some ERO thing. Increase wages to some sort of decent living wage like 15 uh, euro an hour and give increases to everybody that at least match the rate of inflation uh, in order to be able uh, to cope uh, with the increased uh, cost, uh, cost of living that has been imposed on people. And of course, as well as the energy side of things, we have to deal with the biggest cost for most people, which is the cost of putting a roof over your head, and that means introducing rent controls and not relying on the market to deliver housing supply, which is proving uh, completely incapable of doing, but on scale delivering the public and affordable housing uh, uh, that we need, uh, and that the profit-hungry private uh, property investors are not, uh, we're, we're sorting it out, don't we, uh, are not, uh, are not uh, willing or able to do. Very good. I'm redundant.